everyone and welcome to 804 Real Estate Live. Tonight is a very special episode. It's our first time home buyer seminar. Becoming a homeowner is one of the greatest feelings that one can have. It's the American dream to own a home. I know this personally as I became a first time homeowner over 14 years ago. From my experiences on becoming a homeowner, it started my career as a realtor just a short time later. During my time in this profession, as both a realtor and a broker, I've been able to help many of my clients achieve the dream of home ownership. For my first time home buyer clients, closing on their first home brought an end to the days of renting moving trucks and having to move when a lease term expired and the rent increased. Here to stay was the stability that home ownership brought, along with the increase in financial wealth that home ownership brings. Buying a home can be a tricky process. However, it can be a very rewarding process with the right professionals. Tonight, we've assembled some of the top talent in the business to talk about the process and provide helpful insight. From a home inspector, loan officer, insurance agent, settlement attorney, and of course us. Join us for this very special episode at 804 Real Estate Live. It's our first time home buyer seminar and it's coming up next. Welcome to 804 Real Estate Live. I'm Kevin Randizzi, principal broker, owner of 804 Real Estate, here with fellow realtor Joey Christian. And tonight we are bringing you our first time home buyer seminar. It's going to be a good one. Yes, it is going to be a fantastic one. We have got um, four awesome professionals waiting in the wings to talk to us tonight, all the way from loan, <coughs> from a loan officer, home inspector, insurance agent, and a settlement attorney. So we have got a jam-packed show tonight, mm -hmm. and we are going to go through the home buying process for all you first-time home buyers. And one of our guests tonight, I think it's safe to say that they are a real expert in their field, so uh, you're really gonna wanna listen and pay attention to what they have to say. Exactly. Before we get to that, though, we've got a few quick announcements that we gotta go through. Um, number one, our show is being broadcast on Facebook Live, but it's also being broadcast on YouTube as well. It's being live, uh, broadcast simultaneously on uh, YouTube channel as well, and it'll be archived there, so if you want to go and uh, see this particular episode, you can go to either Facebook or YouTube, and we always encourage everybody to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that when awesome videos like this one come out, you, you can know, be alerted. Click the bell. Click the bell on our YouTube channel. You know, as soon as we go live, as soon as we post a new uh, video. Yes. And then also, uh, our sponsor, Movement Mortgage, uh, Jeremy Allenbaugh, 804-615-1887 is Jeremy's contact information. If you are looking to buy or refinance your home right now, Jeremy is an excellent individual. We're going to be speaking to Jeremy here shortly. We are. We are. He's going to have a lot of informative things to say and... I would say that not right now is, is a really great time to contact somebody like Jeremy, and Jeremy specifically because uh, interest rates are pretty pretty low right now uh, as of when we're recording the show. So crazy low rates right now, Jeremy's got a call. Exactly. And talk about being a first-time home buyer. It was 14 years ago in January when I bought my first home. It's been that long? Yeah, I tell yes. you, it's, it's crazy. 14 <laughs> years and... About 75 pounds lighter. <laughs> I, know that story. I bought my first, first home. And it is such a rewarding experience. So if you are watching this show tonight and you are a first time home buyer that's in the market, you know, it is a rewarding experience when you get to the finish line and you own your own home. It is really the American dream. And in my opinion, the number one way to build wealth. Yeah, 
Yeah. yeah. And, and make sure that when you buy a home, you have an exit strategy. Because when you think about it, every home you buy will eventually be sold. So make sure, or you'll have to eventually get rid of it at some point. So mm-hmm. make sure you have a good exit strategy. Make sure you don't overextend yourself financially. Uh, but it can be really, 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 really rewarding um, to buy a home, buy your first home, and then to try and build wealth through real estate. So. When we talk about the professionals that we have uh, with us tonight virtually, we're going to go to Zoom right now. So right. let's click over to Zoom. You say hi to everybody. We've got all of our panelists here. Welcome, guys. Um, with us tonight, we have the following. We have Jeremy Allenbaugh, who is a loan officer with Movement Mortgage. We have Megan Baber, who is an insurance agent with Atkinson Insurance. We have Dylan, Brand, uh, Dylan Morgan, who is a home inspector with Property Doc. He just started his own business. He's doing phenomenal. And then we've got Sean Tuluchek, who's an attorney with uh, Tuluchek and Taylor. I've used Sean many a times uh, over the years. A phenomenal individual. The first part we're going to talk about uh, specifically deals with getting a mortgage. Because mm-hmm. chances are, if you are a first-time home buyer out here, Unless you hit the lottery, you're gonna need a mortgage. You're gonna need a mortgage. And, so and more than likely, maybe an FHA loan, which is something that Jeremy knows a lot about. Yes, yeah. So we're gonna talk with Jeremy first. Jeremy, you there? I sure am. Hey guys. Hey, how's it going? Hey, the uh, so tell tell the audience a little bit about yourself. My name's Jeremy Allenbaugh with uh, Movement Mortgage. For Twenty years. I just thought about that. That's a, that's a long time to be twenty in years. <laughs> 20 years. So I've, I've seen a lot of ups and downs during that time, but uh, it's been great. It's been, I, I wouldn't do anything else. So. The, um, what are some things that first-time home buyers should know with regards to the loan process? If I'm a first-time home buyer right now. What should I know uh, with regards to loan application? Obviously, it's the number one thing. When us realtors uh, work with our clients, the number one thing that we tell our buyers is that you want to get pre-qualified for a mortgage right. so you know your purchasing power. So what, what are some of the things that uh, first-time home buyers should know with regards to the mortgage process? Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head right there. Talking to a loan officer uh, is going to be probably the number one thing, right? We need to have a conversation with a loan officer because we don't know where we are right now we we don't know where we're going to be able to go so we have to have a professional take a look at um you know your overall picture talk to you figure out where you want to go uh and then put some things together but uh, that's the that's the first step for sure and then what type of programs are available for first-time home buyers and with regards to home, uh, loan programs and what are the differences associated with such Sure. Well, the next step is doing an application. So you talk to a loan officer, uh, do an application. That application helps us look at uh, your credit, helps us do loan scenarios and figure out what you qualify for. Do you need 100% financing? Do you have a down payment? Uh, There's all kinds of loan programs out there. There's 100% financing. There's down payment assistance programs that are fantastic uh, and out there for, for a lot of people. A lot of people don't know about them. They just um, they're great. They're great. How about uh, programs for military? So VA is uh, is one of the best loans, if not the best loan out there. That is a hundred percent financing. Wow. So uh, no mortgage insurance, a hundred percent financing. It is uh, the best loan out there right now. You know the rates are still amazing, uh, even with no mortgage insurance. Uh, so they're they're fantastic. Many first-time home buyers are worried in terms of having to bring uh, excessive amounts of money to closing. They, they think that uh, they're automatically disqualified from the process because of the, they think it's going to be an astronomical amount of money that they're going to need in order to buy a home. Like up, some, some even say up to 20%. Right. Which, you know, that couldn't be further from the truth. Is that right? Absolutely. There are, you know, I've gotten borrowers into homes for $500 or less. $500. That's amazing. It's amazing, right? Yeah. Uh, a lot of borrowers come to me and they they're, they don't think they're ready. They, they don't have, you know, a lot of money saved up, but they need to get out of the situation that they're in. Uh, and, and more times than not, those borrowers are qualified for something. It's, uh, yeah. it's pretty amazing to see the smile on people's faces when I tell them that I can get them into a home for less than $1,000. So it's yeah. pretty incredible. 
Yeah, the uh, that was my case uh, when I bought my first home years ago. I actually, um, I, I think I only had to put up a thousand dollars in order go. to get in my first home. So it was definitely a, a pleasant surprise at the yeah. closing table. Yeah. Uh, one last question before we move on to Dylan. The um, with regards to interest rates right now, can you tell us a little bit about the interest rates that people are seeing? Yeah, they're in the mid two to high twos. So. Definitely under 3%, which is amazing. If anyone looks back at the history of mortgage interest rates, really in reality over over the life of 30 years, um, anything under 4% is amazing. So the fact that we're talking about 2%, 2 2.5%, some 15-year mortgages are below 2%. I taught one and three quarters the other day. Uh, It's just incredible. And now is the time to buy because we don't know how long these interest rates are going to be here. That's that's the big thing, right? People that are sitting on the fence uh, or waiting for rates to get even better than they are, um, you know, now is the time. I, t- I tell you what, I've got a mortgage on my house right now. I'm going to be talking to you after we get off the show. <laughs> Refinance. <laughs> yes. Get that, get that 2021 rate. Yes. Now, we, we go from mortgages to inspections. And we've got Dylan uh, Morgan here, who is the owner of Property Doc. Dylan, can you hear us? Yep, I can hear you just fine. Perfect. See, uh, this is your first year of being in business for yourself. Tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, so, I got in business about this time last year, uh, inspecting houses. I uh, wanted to get into uh, the home inspection side of things because I saw a lot of value in the service that it delivers to to potential home buyers and sometimes even homeowners that are looking to sell or just want to know about the general condition of their home. Uh, so I come in, spend a few hours at each house, go through all of the visible systems in that home on the exterior, the site, and on the interior of the home. And then I give a written report at the end uh, with photos, videos, illustrations, and narratives to explain my findings at the house. Um, it's very informational as well as useful as a negotiation tool um, when you are purchasing a house that you know what things will need attention and repair and potentially some costs involved there, you may be able to get the seller to help you with some of those items, or at least you know after you move in what you need to address. But then there's also informational things in the report that just tell you about how the different systems in your house operate. So it's a it's a good report to be able to reference for many years down the road. Perfect. If I'm a first time home buyer and uh, we get the property under contract, the next step is obviously to get a home inspection, which you know, it's highly recommended, uh, you know, in any case, because buying a home is going to be the biggest purchase that most any of us are going to make in our lifetime. We want to make sure that what we're buying is, you know, a quality product. What can a home, uh, what can a home buyer expect, a first time home buyer expect uh, come inspection day? And what are some things that they should know? Uh, So I always encourage uh, anyone that works with me to try to attend the inspection it's not a requirement because I know that there are some people that just don't have schedules that allow for it. But if you can take some time off of work or schedule it at a time that you can be off work to attend the inspection and carve out two, three, maybe four hours uh, to follow along with the inspector um, and let them tell you what they find as they find it, you'll have a much better understanding of your home and its condition. And it allows us to elaborate and explain a little more than what you'll see in the report later. We can give you more of those subjective opinions like oh, this is something I see a lot or this isn't very common things like that uh, so it is a good idea to attend the inspection uh, you should expect that no matter how new and no matter how pristine the house looks to you your inspector if they do their job will most likely still find numerous defects and issues with the home it doesn't mean that they're a big deal but a house is a very complex system with a lot of pieces and the day that it, you, the day they start building it is the day it started. It starts to age. And mm-hmm. even on, I do quite quite a bit of my work is actually new homes, new construction, and one year warranty inspections. If you do own a new house, I recommend you have that done. I always find numerous issues even on new houses. Um, in fact, I usually will tell those people that are on the fence about whether or not they want to spend the money on the inspection that uh, even on a new house, I always pay for myself. If you add up the cost to fix. The issues that I find on the inspection, it always exceeds my cost to come out and inspect the house. So I'm a good return on investment in all cases. You, s- you speak about new uh, new construction. What types of things have you found on new construction that, that do uh, come out as far as defects? 
Uh, on new construction, oftentimes it's similar fit and finish items, uh, just little nitpicky stuff like caulk and sealant around uh, protrusions, such as uh, where the gas meter plumbing goes into the home or uh, HVAC lines. Uh, sometimes there's just poor construction um, on certain things. Maybe they had a, a newer uh, apprentice contractor out that day that maybe didn't do the best job and you have an opportunity to catch those things and have them corrected before they move in. Um, actually, some of the, uh, actually I do call out things on almost every single inspection on the new houses. And I know it, uh, it creates a little frustration between uh, the inspectors and the builders. And I'll give you a prime example, I actually posted about it today on my uh, social media accounts. And it's about uh, downspout extensions on gutters. Um, you shouldn't have a downspout that drains water directly onto a lower roof plane. And if you exactly. do, mm -hmm. it will most likely deteriorate the shingles in the area where that water flows across the roof and it will wear that area out prematurely. So if you had a 20 year warranty on your roof and you call that roofing manufacturer at the 15 year mark and say, what, what's up with my shingles? They're curling and deteriorating. They're not going to want to replace them because they're going to come out and see that you had gutters discharge onto that roof surface. And they're going to say that that destroyed the roofing material. So that's something that our builders in our area, almost every single new house I inspect, they discharge water onto the lower roof planes instead of redirecting the water all the way to the foundation of the home in a way, or going down to a lower gutter system. Yeah, I, I see. I've seen that a lot my own I've, self. I've seen it as well. And Dylan, I think what you could say is that I think you said it earlier. Um, if you catch that, which you will because you're awesome, when you catch that uh, during your initial inspection, you're actually going to save the homeowner money over time and you're going to save them having to maybe replace part of a roof or a roof five, ten years prematurely because, again, the roofing company is not going to warranty that work because mm -hmm. that, that was not their fault. No. No, they're going to say there's no fault of the manufacturer. Yeah. You Sometimes you see issues where it seems like uh, different tradesmen didn't talk to each other. Uh, most recently, I saw an issue with a, uh, a floor joist. Uh, this was a, an I-beam, uh, so it was engineered yeah. uh, wood, less materials used, but still has similar strength characteristics to it. The important thing about an I-beam is that you can't cut into the top or lower planes of that beam at all, or you significantly uh, hinder its, its uh, strength. And I saw an issue where a plumber, need, I guess, didn't quite have the space he wanted for his drain pipe, and he cut into that top plane on the I beam. Ooh. And oh, that, that's not that good. That's not a structural good. issue that had to go in the report, and now needs to be corrected by a structural engineer because of a. We're talking about a one-inch notch in that beam. Just something tiny like that that no one would think anything of. You probably never even notice it. That 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 is not any fun. No, nope. no, no nope. fun. Well, we got through, um, we talked with Jeremy, we talked with Dylan uh, about loans and home inspection part. When we come back, we're going to talk about insurance with Megan Baber of Atkinson Insurance. And then we're going to get a chance to talk to an attorney for free. Can you th think about that? We get a, <laughs> we're we're going to get a chance to talk to uh, Sean Toluchak tonight. Uh, attorney, we're, and it's actually going to be free. I, I thank you for, uh, for doing that, Sean. Um, when we come back, we're going to talk with Megan and Sean, so don't go away. We'll be right back. Also, if you have questions, feel free to type them in the comments section below. We already see we've got quite a few questions to start. Uh, keep typing them away, and we will get to them in the third part of the show. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Jeremy Allenbaugh with Movement Mortgage. I'm your local mortgage professional in the Richmond market. I love my job, and it's truly a joy for me to help people finance their dream homes. Working with such an incredible team like Movement Mortgage, I am able to give you professional advice and help you with a seamless transaction from start to finish through the mortgage process. Please don't hesitate to call me anytime with any of your mortgage needs. I look forward to hearing from you soon.
Being a first time home buyer can be tough. It's often confusing and overwhelming going through the process of pre qualifying for a loan, shopping for houses, making offers, getting a home under contract, and ultimately getting it to the closing table. It helps to have a seasoned professional by your side to help you through the whole process. My name is Joey Christian with 804 Real Estate, and I can be that person for you. I'll hold your hand through the entire process and make sure that you understand every step. And I'll help manage your expectations to make sure that the entire process goes as smoothly as possible. Call me today at 804-441-5232 to make sure that your first time buying a home is a pleasant experience. <clears throat> and we're back, 804 Real Estate Live here. Kevin Randizzi, principal, uh, principal broker here with fellow realtor Joey Christian of 804 Real Estate. And this is our first time home buyer seminar. In the first part of the show, we talk with Jeremy Allenbaugh, loan officer of Movement Mortgage. And then we talk with Dylan Morgan, who started his own home inspection company, Property Doc, about home inspections. Now we're going to shift. And we're going to be talking about homeowners insurance next with the homeowners insurance expert, Megan Baber. Megan, are you there? I'm here. Thanks so much, Kev. Yeah. The um, So go ahead and tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Sure. Yeah. So I've been working in the insurance industry since about 2012. Uh, I've always been working for an independent insurance agency. Um, I love what I do. I live in Mechanicsville. I've been married for almost 10 years and I have a seven-year-old boy named Nate and a three, almost four-year-old son named Jacob who keep me very, very busy. Um, and uh, in my free time, I like to explore some new parks. Um, I like to give back to the community and um, just kind of enjoy life. Perfect, perfect. So if I'm a first time home buyer, what are some things that I should know with regards to insurance on my home? I, I gotta get insurance on my home, what should I, what are things that I should do? Sure, that's a great question because a lot of times uh, with, throughout the home buying process, um, you know, finding the house, getting the mortgage, making sure it passes inspection, making sure it appraises. There's all of these big events that happen that are super stressful. Um, and homeowners just kind of falls on this list of things that needs to be submitted for underwriting along with bank statements and W-2s. Um, and a lot of first time home buyers don't really know where to turn for homeowners insurance. So a lot of times they will call their auto insurance carrier, um, which a lot of times is Geico or Progressive um, while they are all great carriers, their home rates aren't always <clears throat> the best in the industry. Um, so <clears throat> what ends up happening is that affects, you know, when you purchase your home, Jeremy can speak to this. You have, you know, your debt to income ratio, you factor in your homeowner's insurance to your escrow payments and the, the lower your homeowner's insurance, that can affect your monthly mortgage payment. So it is important to not be paying too much for homeowner's insurance as that can affect your monthly rate and how much you pay. Um, the other thing with working with um, an independent agent such as myself is accessibility. Um, you know, you don't have to call a 1-800 number, wait on hold, press, you know, five, then seven, then two to get to somebody and hope to leave a message. Um, I'm a text away, I'm a phone call away. If you're having an issue on the weekend with, you know, I've had situations where I've had clients, um, you know, their entire first floor is just flooded with um, sewage waste and on a Saturday. So they text me and I immediately step in and guide them through it. The biggest thing with a first time home buyer is a lot of times you don't understand exactly what's covered under homeowner's insurance, what's included, what's not included. It's just that one thing you need to have. So when you're shopping for insurance, I would suggest working with somebody that you can trust that will fully explain the policy so that you understand exactly what's covered, what's not covered. So in the event of a claim or an emergency, you know what to expect. 
Perfect, perfect. Lots of good information very there. Good, yeah, very good information. <clears throat> I would say that homeowner's insurance is one of those things, one of those peace of mind things, and I think Macon can speak to this as well. Um, I was involved in a property years back that burned down, um, you know, but luckily we, that was a rental property. Luckily we had a, uh, a landlord uh, uh, insurance uh, package on that property, and they took care of us really well. It's just one of those things that hopefully you hope you don't really have to use it, but it's there in case you do. Correct. Correct. Yeah, the insurance. Uh, I think it's one of the most important things when you when you buy your home. You want to make sure that you know what you have is covered, yeah. and you want to make sure that you have the right coverages. You know, because you know if you don't have the right coverages, it's going to be catastrophic. I think so too, and I think it helps to have a, a local person like you yes. like she said, instead of uh, your State Farm or you know, somebody like that, where you don't you never have face to face time with your with your agent. Megan is right here. She's basically right around the corner. So, and I know for a fact that she'll help guide folks through that process. And a shout out to Megan. Uh, yeah. She looked at our commercial policy for our company. All right. And she saved us over a thousand dollars a year. Hey, there we and go. We, and we wow. needed one less policy. She is so she. We love Megan. So does that mean I can go out and do bad things now because Megan is protecting? Me? No. Okay. <laughs> no. That might be a liability. That might be a liability, Kevin. <laughs> No, we, we try to do good things here yeah, in exactly, exactly. we, we, we don't, We're not trying to do bad. <laughs> Any, anything else that uh, first-time buyers should know with regards to insurance? Yeah, I think uh, you spoke just a moment ago about coverages. Um, you know, don't always look at the bottom dollar of what, it, what the premium is. You need to make sure that your house, for one, ha- is 100% insured to value in case you do have a total loss. Mm-hmm. You want to make sure... <clears throat> your house is 100% insured to value so that it will be replaced the way it was before that total loss. Also, a misconception on insurance is people think that if you're overinsured, um, so meaning it's going to cost you 200000 to rebuild your home, but you have 250000 of insurance on your home, uh, it's a common misconception that that extra 50000 would just be given to you, and that's not accurate. No, um, no, you're going to no. rebuild your home to the way it was before. So, you know, make sure that they're not insuring your home for too much just to collect premium on you. Um, So it's important to make sure that your home is insured to value. It's also important to make sure you have water backup coverage. That's going to give you uh, coverage in case of uh, sump pump um, backup or, um, you know, you have a toilet overflow into your home. You want to make sure you have coverage for that. Also, service line coverage is a new endorsement on homeowners insurance, so it covers the underground pipes that run from your home to the street, um, which Dominion Power will send you so many letters offering mm-hmm. coverage on that. Mm-hmm. Um, they have gotten a few of those. Endorsement yeah. on the homeowners policy, and it's way cheaper um, than purchasing the Dominion plan. Mm-hmm. So make sure you look into that. Um, if you have any questions, I'm always happy to review if you've gotten a quote and you want me to compare it and point out the differences between coverages, I will be the first one to say, hey, this is a better policy, or I will be the first one to say, hey, this is what you need that you don't have. And with everybody here tonight, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put their comments, or we're going to put their information both on the 804 Real Estate Facebook page, and then we're also going to go ahead and we'll put it into this video as well. That way, if you're watching this video and you want to contact either Jeremy, Dylan, Megan, or Sean, you'll have their information there. So we go from getting pre-qualified and getting pre-approved with a loan, getting, getting our home, home inspection home done, getting homeowners, insurance. getting homeowners insurance, and we get to the final part of the transaction settlement. Yep. And I don't think there's anybody better in Richmond at settlement than Sean Tuluchek with uh, Tuluchek and Taylor. He's handled many of my uh, my settlements, uh, my client settlements. And having a settlement attorney, attorney, in my opinion, is paramount. Yeah. So that being said, Sean, can you hear us? Yeah, I hear you fine. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Yep. Go ahead and tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Great. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, so, yeah, I'm a local real estate attorney. I've been uh, an attorney in Richmond for 21 years now. Uh, I kind of have an interesting background. Uh, for the first 10 years, I litigated. So I was a trial lawyer. Um which kind of gives me a unique perspective in real estate. Most of your real estate attorneys in town have never tried a case. Um, and I did a lot of real estate litigation before I started becoming um, a settlement agent or a settlement attorney. And so I've seen kind of all of the things that can come up and how they play out in the courtroom. So I know you never want to end up there. Um, and it's like you said, Kevin, uh, being a real estate attorney, 
you're basically on retainer for 30 to 45 days for free other than your settlement fee, but your mm -hmm. settlement fee, you're going to pay to anybody anyways. So you kind of have an attorney's ear. <clears throat> you have the ability to email or call, pick up the phone and ask questions. Um, so yeah, I've got a small practice to Chuck and Taylor. We're down the West end. Um, I guess a little bit across from Innsbruck. I've got two daughters and uh, I love Richmond. I love kayaking in the rivers and uh, fishing in them. Perfect. If I'm a first time home buyer and I come to the settlement, uh, the settlement office, what are some things that I should know as, as far uh, with, with regards to a settlement on my transaction? Yeah, so I think the first thing you want to know is that everybody on the screen is working for you, um, and that includes me. And so I'm, you know, I'm going to be your attorney and you're my client. Don't be afraid to ask questions, um, you know, if, especially if you're a first time home buyer. And that's our job is to make sure. You feel fully informed and you know exactly what's happening in the process. When it comes to closing and you're coming to my office, we're ready to have fun, right? You've been through the ringer. You've been through a lot. It takes a hell of a lot to get to that closing table these days. Um, it's worth it because the rates are so fantastic um, and you're going to be locked in for 30 years at a rate that nobody else has seen before. So it's just a wonderful time to buy a home. Um, and we're going to go through all the documents. You're going to bring your ID. You're going to bring your closing check, um, and we're going to go through every single document that you need to understand and make sure you're fully informed. Perfect. Perfect. With um, with regards to settlement, there is settlement attorneys like yourselves, and then there's title companies. Can you elaborate a little bit as far as the differences between the two? Sure. It's an easy one. I mean, a settlement agent or a title company can't give legal advice. So if you have a single legal issue that comes up during the transaction, you can't ask your title agent what to do because if they tell you they're actually committing a crime in Virginia, mm -hmm. I've never understood why somebody that has the opportunity for basically the same amount of money wouldn't want to have an attorney in their corner when they can have one. Um, so many things come up in real estate transaction these days. It's not like it used to be where people would work on a handshake. Now everything is controlled by the contract. And I see people argue over things as small as, oh my God, they took the rose bush to things as big as the builder put the gutters on wrong and the roof is leaking, right? So we see it all in these transactions and it's invaluable to be able to say, hey, Sean, what can I do here? What do you think I should do here? And what's the worst and best thing that can happen? Yep. Yeah. That's, those are really good points, Sean. And I, I think, uh, uh, one big thing that resonated with me that Sean said just now is that when you work with a title company, they can't give legal advice. So if you hit a legal snag, you might have to turn around and pay extra money to hire someone like Sean anyway. Yep. So why not just work with Sean from the from the beginning? You, you, yeah, Joey, gonna... and I'll tell you, we, we love to help our clients. Mm -hmm. But when somebody comes to me and they say, hey, can you help me on this deal? I I started with the title company to save $50. Yeah. Can you help me on this transaction? Because I'm in a legal position where I need help. It's Then you're hiring me off the block, right? Yeah. It's going to yeah. be a $500 minimum retainer because I've got to sit down. I've got to review everything. Um, and so I'm going to do that for free if I'm already representing you. Yeah. yeah. Excellent point. Excellent point. Yeah, it's, it's just, I think it's just better to go with the attorney all, all, all together because it's uh, – like you, like you said, now you you can hit a legal snag, and it is it is no fun when you get in yeah. that uh, in that type of a, a pickle. I think most of us here at this office, a lot of us here, have worked with Sean and can endorse him as well. It, so. Exactly, exactly. We we like working with you, Sean. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks, man. I like working with you guys too. And I think it's important to note that having a team like this as a first time home buyer is crucial. Mm -hmm. Everybody that I'm seeing is accessible, and that's not always the case when I do closings. You know, I think. When I see an I mean, when I see an insurance uh, binder and it's straight from Geico or Liberty or USAA, I'm usually seeing you know higher rates than what I would see if they went straight to Megan. Um, and the reason is because she's providing a service and she wants to do a good job mm -hmm. and she's easily accessible because she's accountable, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of accountability in what you see here. Uh, you know, you can pick up the phone, you can call Jeremy, you can drive down the road and see him. I mean, Dylan obviously, you know does a lot for his clients. I don't always see that in my transactions. If somebody starts with a large institutional lender, 
that sometimes I just, I find that people aren't even working on their files until three or four days before closing. It's yeah. maddening. Perfect, perfect. Good information. Well, we've reached the uh, portion of the show where we're going to go to the live questions. So we're going to go to the live questions when we come back. If you have a question for any of the professionals that you've seen on the screen tonight, feel free to go ahead and type it in the comment section. It's not too late. Type it into the Facebook comment section if you're watching us on Facebook. Um, and we will go ahead. We will ask it when we come back. So don't go away. You all ready for some live questions when we come back? Let's do it. Perfect. Yes, let's do it. All right. Sounds good. We're going to get to those live questions when we come back. So don't go away. We'll, we'll see you in just a minute. Hi, I'm Jeremy Allenbaugh with Movement Mortgage. I'm your local mortgage professional in the Richmond market. I love my job, and it's truly a joy for me to help people finance their dream homes. Working with such an incredible team like Movement Mortgage, I am able to give you professional advice and help you with a seamless transaction from start to finish through the mortgage process. Please don't hesitate to call me anytime with any of your mortgage needs. I look forward to hearing from you soon. For more information on home loans, visit movementmortgage.com. Being a first time home buyer can be tough. It's often confusing and overwhelming going through the process of pre-qualifying for a loan, shopping for houses, making offers, getting a home under contract, and ultimately getting it to the closing table. It helps have a seasoned professional by your side to help you through the whole process. My name is Joey Christian with 804 Real Estate, and I can be that person for you. I'll hold your hand through the entire process and make sure that you understand every step and I'll help manage your expectations to make sure that the entire process goes as smoothly as possible. Call me today at 804-441-5232 to make sure that your first time buying a home is a pleasant experience. Hi, I'm Jeremy Allenbaugh with Movement Mortgage. I'm your local mortgage professional in the Richmond market. I love my job, and it's truly a joy for me to help people finance their dream homes. Working with such an incredible team like Movement Mortgage, I am able to give you professional advice and help you with a seamless transaction from start to finish through the mortgage process. Please don't hesitate to call me anytime with any of your mortgage needs. I look forward to hearing from you soon. For more information on home loans, visit movementmortgage.com.
Okay, we are back. 804 Real Estate Live here. Um, Kevin Randisi, principal broker, owner of 804 Real Estate here with fellow realtor Joey Christian. And we are here with our professionals in our first time home buyer seminar that we are doing virtually via Zoom. We have got Jeremy Allenbaugh with Movement Mortgage. We have Megan Baber with Atkinson Insurance. We have uh, Dylan Morgan with Property Doc uh, Inspections. We've got Megan Baber with Atkinson. I think I just said that. You said that. <laughs> and then we've got, we got Sean Salujak. Oh, she gets uh, a double Jack shout out. Yeah, so, sorry about that. We've got Otis walking around yeah. as well. So I, I was keeping an eye on that yeah. at, the, at the same time. We are at the portion of the show where we are going to the live questions. So let's get to the questions. We've got a ton of them. Let's see. The uh, first question goes to Jeremy. Are there special loans for first-time responders? Uh, there are some programs that are out there for benefits for first responders, whether it's a thousand dollar credit, and there are even some loans out there with some special financing, uh, minimum down payments, things like that. So there are there are programs out there for first time buyers. There are programs out there for first responders. There's there's all kinds of things right now trying to get people into homes because rates are so amazing. Also, to, to add to that, there is also a program through HUD where certain occupations, and a lot of those being first responders, uh, can get a severe, severe discount on a HUD home as well. So that's something that those folks may want to look through as well. Great question. And then we've got a question. Uh, Lisa Christian asks, what do you mean when you say exit strategy? I think that was for you, Joey. <laughs> that was for me. So what I mean <laughs> by exit strategy is a way to recover or get out of a property that you have spent money on or that you have bought. So, um, you know, if you buy a house and, and you fall upon hard times, maybe uh, a worldwide pandemic happens, maybe you lose your job, uh, maybe just something bad happens and you need to make a move, what is your exit strategy for exiting that property that you bought? That's what I mean by that. Perfect. And then we are going to a question for one. We're going to go to a question for everybody. Everybody here. Uh, are there any common missteps people make when buying their first home and how can you avoid them? So I guess from each of your uh, profession, you can talk about some common missteps that people make. I, we'll start with Jeremy first and then go to Dylan, Megan, and Sean. I'd have to say that it, it borrowers being afraid to pull their credit. Um, <clears throat> they want to buy something out in advance. They say they want to move in six to 12 months. Uh, it's a really good idea to talk to a loan officer and get pre-qualified. Um, borrowers don't always know with these free credit reporting agencies or Credit Karma, uh, they give you an estimation of what your credit score is. They are not what a lender is going to pull. So as a creditor, we pull three from three credit bureaus, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. And if you were to go to Credit Karma or even Experian or one of those places, they give you an estimation of what your score is. So that's not actually what I'm going to see. So having your credit pulled, looking at that, um, looking into the future saying, you know, to get the loan I want, to get the rates that I want, we need to get my credit score to X. Uh, if we don't do that up front, um, then we're never going to be able to get to, to what you need or want. Hey, Jeremy, quick question. If you, uh, if I get pre-qualified today or pre-approved today, how long does that pre-approval letter last? How long do I have to cash in on that loan? Yeah, so your credit report's good for 120 days, so a lot longer than you'd think. Mm -hmm. We do like to update things, you know, if it's been two or three months um, and you have had some credit issues in the past, it may be a good idea to pull your credit before you go and make an offer on a house. But technically, your credit report is good for 120 days, so that pre-approval is good for, for a long period of time. Sure. Thank you. And then we'll go to Dylan next. I think that two, in my opinion, two of the common mistakes that are made is one at the inspector selection process. Some folks choose to do their own homework. Um, they're either the realtor doesn't provide a recommendation to them for a home inspector, or they decide to look for themselves. Um, and I do have conversations every day with people that are shopping around for inspectors, but I do feel that a lot of them don't ask the right questions. Um, a lot of times, 
I have to volunteer more information to them because really the two things they want to know is how much is it and when are you available. Um, I think that commonly people think that a home inspection is the same no matter who you buy it from. And unfortunately, that's just not the case. Um, there, are, there are really good, thorough, high quality inspectors in our area, but then there are some that really don't want to be there very long. They're in and out. And oftentimes the price reflects that. So just because someone quotes you high or someone quotes you low, it doesn't mean you're getting a, a better inspection or more value. Um, the second thing would be not actually reading the inspection report, which I know is tough. Our reports are long. I mean, you set 30, 40, 50 pieces of paper in front of one, someone and say you got to read all this, especially when they're in a really hectic buying process trying to get a house. It's, it's a lot to ask. But at the very least, look at the summary and read each of the defect option observations that the inspector finds and make sure, under, make sure you understand them. If you have any more questions, you should be able to reach your home inspector. Whether you call them or email them, they should be able to get back to you in a timely manner to clarify anything that you're wondering about. Megan? Dylan, I love hearing you talk about home inspections. Home inspections is a big thing that um, I deal with when it comes to insurance because if you miss things on home inspections, or if an inspector says this roof looks good to go when really it's at the end of its life, that ends up turning into the buyer's problem who then tries to file an insurance claim and oftentimes it's not covered for wear and tear or things like that. So having a home inspection at the beginning is crucial for the next step, which is home insurance. Um, so the biggest misstep that I see with uh, new home buyers is um, they, they tend to like to go with the, the big name companies because that's what they've seen on the TV and that's what they've heard. Um, and and I, I time and time again, every single day, I am quoting against the all states, the nationwide, the USAAs, the progressives um, on home insurance. And I am providing more coverage for half the price. Um, and a lot of times the biggest question I get from first time home buyers is, that just doesn't make sense to me. You know, why, how could it be half the price? There's obviously something I'm missing. There's got to be, it's got to be some sort of, you know, bad policy that doesn't provide coverage. And, and that's just not accurate. It's just that you're not being advised properly. And there's a market for everything. And um, USAA, Allstate, Progressive, they have great auto rates um, and sometimes have great home rates as well. They provide great customer service as well. However, a lot of times they are priced high on the homeowner side um, and that's where I can come in and help save because that does affect your bottom mortgage price at the end of the month. And Sean? Yeah, I think the number one thing is not listening, um, you know, to the professionals that are involved. I think that we're in a society where everybody likes to rush to the internet when they hear what they don't want to hear. Uh, and the whole point of having people like us in this room represent you is so that you're getting good advice. Um, and so when Dylan tells you something's not that serious, you should trust him. If he tells you it is serious, you trust him. You don't run out and get a second opinion on Google. Uh, Megan's going to find you the best coverages. You know, don't like you know, don't trust the commercials is, is what I'd say. Um, and Jeremy's going to tell you what to do in the loan process. So you don't delay it. I, can, I see it time and time again. He, you know, the lender will ask for things and they'll think, oh, well, I'll get it to them on Monday when they've asked for it on Thursday. Well, that four days is crucial in our process. I mean, we're given a very limited amount of time to do a ton of work. And so listen to the people that you've hired to protect you. Perfect, perfect. Well said. Let's go to the next inspection, uh, next question. And it is for Dylan. When you do inspections, do you give repair estimates and recommendations on who to contact? Many first time buyers do not know contractors. Yeah, Pat's asking some great questions in there. I actually had to pull up a uh, sample report just to really answer her questions. So um, bear with me for just a moment. I'm gonna try to screen share and I'm not great with Zoom. Let's see if I can get it. Oh, uh, screen sharing is disabled, Kevin. Let me see if I can go ahead. Uh... Okay, try it now. Got it. Okay. Here we go. Uh, can y'all see a web browser? Hold on a second. Modern inspection reports. Let's see what we did. Yes, we can see it. Okay. All right. Uh, so I include sample reports hold, hold on my on web page. Hold, uh, to show hold, hold on a quick second there, 
Dylan. Okay. That's it. There we go. Are I had to refresh it. Go ahead. Samples. Okay. Uh, so the first part of the question was about cost estimates, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. The first part is cost, uh, okay. cost estimates. So we are we are one of very few markets. I believe there's three in the United States. Don't ask me where they are. I don't remember. But <laughs> we're one of three cities in the United States where cost estimates are expected to come from the inspector. And so as a courtesy, uh, myself and others do offer, we try to give you a, a reasonable price range uh, for issues just to give you an idea of how much it might cost to correct but they're not 100% uh, because we often don't know exactly what it's gonna cost without tearing into things. And we don't destroy the property when we come to inspect. Uh, but on this, this was a real house I did inspect. Uh, it's just been converted into a sample for privacy. Uh, but you'll see on each issue, there's a price range listed uh, for how much these repairs might cost to do, uh, just depending on who you call. Um, Secondly, she asked about vendors. Uh, so yeah, of course, not everyone knows a, a electric an electrician and an HVAC guy, and they don't always know who to call because they don't know who's going to do a great job, who's just going to charge them a ton of money, uh, and who might cut corners and cost them more money later. Uh, so I, I don't know what other inspectors do here, but this is something I, I do just to try to create additional value for my clients. Uh, so in here, there is a, uh, a link uh, to a private page that's available for clients and their agents. Uh, and I list local vendors in here. These are people that I know and like, like and trust that I've worked with before. They have good established reputations in our area. They take good care of their clients. Uh, so this is, this is something your inspector might provide for you if you ask. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Good, good information there. Yeah. I must say, I, I don't, I don't think I've ever had a home inspector and I've been a part of lots of home inspections. I don't think I've ever had a home inspector provide me something like that. So I think that's a huge value add to them. Thank you. I'm trying to get off the uh, screen share. Hang on. There we go. Okay. Let's see if we get it. All right. Let's see. Uh, hold on a second. All right. There we go. We're back, and then um, let's see here. Next question. I've been told the seller normally pays closing costs. Is that deal true? Does that cover realtor commissions? Joey? Um, so the way that a listing agreement works with the seller, um, so I have, for instance, I have a listing agreement in Henrico right now. Uh, um, that listing, I won't say who it is or what, what's going on, but uh, that listing agreement, um, the seller has agreed to pay our brokerage, 804 Real Estate, a, a percentage um, as a commission, okay? Uh, that seller has also given me permission to split that percentage with the buying broker. So the broker that brings the buyer gets half of that percentage. Um, so that is the nature of listing agreements. The seller pays the listing broker uh, upon sale of the house, and that listing broker, it's up to them how they split it with a uh, buying broker. Uh, a lot of times you might see half and half. I think that's sort of an industry standard. By no means required, but that's sort of an industry standard. So, Perfect, perfect information. Let's see here. We are going to scroll around to the questions. Let's see. Um... Otis wants some pets here, so I'm kind of... Yeah, Otis is sitting on the chair right next to Joey there. Uh, is it cheaper to have homeowner's insurance and car insurance with the same company? That question is for you, Megan. Absolutely. Anytime you can bundle home and auto insurance with the same company, you're going to get discounts on both policies. Um, sometimes it doesn't always make sense, and that sounds kind of crazy, but um, every once in a while I do run across something where um, there's a home policy with company A and an auto policy with company B, um, that if you combine them, they're cheaper than putting them with the same company. Hmm. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, the number one goal is to pair them with the same company to maximize those discounts. Perfect. Perfect. And we're, we're going to ask uh, three more questions. We've got a ton of questions. We appreciate them. The rest of them, we're going to go ahead. We're going to get to off the air just, uh, just due to time. We appreciate everybody asking the questions. Let's see, all of the services are great, 
Uh, are any of the professionals on the stage, uh, on the screen tonight, doing uh, virtual services, or are they all in person? We'll start with you, Jeremy. So you mean as far doing doing Zoom presentations or taking applications over Zoom virtually? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Certainly, we can do that. I mean, we can accommodate anything. Uh, most of our stuff is our applications are done on an online application system. But if someone wanted to do a, a Zoom meeting, that would be more than fine. Perfect. Uh, Dylan? Yeah, you know, I, I really like my drone. It's very capable, but I don't know if I could be flying it out. Really, uh, no, obviously I, would, I wouldn't do my service virtually, but what I would be willing to do if someone preferred, if it made them more comfortable, is if they wanted to FaceTime with me while I did the inspection, um, I could do that off and on throughout the, the work and of course give a uh, summary at the end. Megan? That's awesome. Yeah, 99% of what I do can be done um, through phone call, email, and electronic signatures. Um, there have been instances where I've visited elderly clients who are not email savvy, um, wearing a mask, um, and making sure that I'm protecting myself and I'm open to Zoom as well. And Sean. Yeah, so we have a ton of options uh, and it depends on the client, really. Uh, we like it when they come to the office because we know we can see them sign, we know no mistakes are made, um, and we can do that final step the right way. But if somebody's uncomfortable, we'll send what's called a remote notary to your house. They'll have you sign the docs and you can send it back to me. On my Facebook page, we have actually like a, uh, you know, just a closing that we did the dry run through. They can watch that. Or I can do a Zoom call with them while they have the documents in front of them if they have a family member that's a notary or something to that effect. Perfect, perfect. Two more questions. We're gonna go to this one. If I have to leave my home due to sewer fire damage or anything, Will homeowners cover my cost to stay in a hotel? And that one's for you, Megan. Yes, so there is a coverage D, which is loss of use. Um, this is typically a percentage of your dwelling coverage. And this is gonna cover you to stay somewhere in case of a loss at your home where you're um, unable to stay. So if you have a kitchen fire, um, a whole house fire, or you know, this, there's sewer in your home, if you cannot stay there, that coverage would pay for you to stay in a hotel or a rental home, so you're not having to come out of pocket for your mortgage and for somewhere else to stay. Perfect, perfect. Um, this, uh, we'll do two more here, uh, and they're both for Sean. Uh, Sean, what's the sort of legal issues have come up that you've had to handle? With yeah, that's a great question. Uh, usually these days it revolves around somebody either trying to get out of a contract yeah. or somebody to force somebody to stay in a contract. Mm -hmm. uh, Everybody in this room is familiar with buyer cold feet. Mm -hmm. um, maybe they decided that it's too much money. Maybe they decided they, the house down the street is the one they'd rather have. Um, but contract law in Virginia is strong. It's very binding. There's not a ton of, of ways out. And so, um, you know, if somebody has decided that they would need to get out of the contract, sometimes I'll help them do that. Uh, on the flip side, if I represent a seller, I'm going to try to keep the buyer in the contract. And a lot of those issues come down to what is a defect in the home inspection, right? Uh, people think, oh, well, you know, the siding is a little bit chipped and that came up on my home inspection, so I should be able to get out of the, um, the contract. Well, does that affect the normal use stability of the home? Maybe not, you know, maybe it's more of a cosmetic thing. And if it is, and you try to put that on your home inspection report and get out of your contract, you might find that the attorney on the other side doesn't let you do that. Good information. Yeah, there you go. And last one, on the attorney side, I've been through a few and did you, Sean, and he comes highly recommended. He provided did all the legwork and put my mind at ease. Sean, please put a potential buyer through what you do to make things go so smoothly. Yeah, so the main thing is communication. I mean, that's for everybody in our business. Uh, anybody that's worked with me knows that they can pick up the phone and they'll get the attorney on the phone. That's just... That's not the way it is always in our business. Um, and I will respond to an email that day. Um, and I'm also going to shoot you straight. And I like to work with people that shoot people straight, meaning I might not tell you exactly what you want to hear, but I'm going to tell you how I think it's going to go and how it will impact you uh, and what the best decision is for you. I'm not scared to kind of give bad advice, not bad advice, but bad information that people don't want to hear mm -hmm. um, because we're in a world that people always want to hear what they want to hear. But in real estate, this is not always the case. Nope. 
No, and, and, and you know, sometimes you got to tell people stuff that they don't want to hear, uh, even though if it's not popular. Yeah, we, yeah. We've been on that side many a times our own self. I, so. I don't want to tell them half the time either, because that means, you know, it's yeah. the way we want it, so. It, exactly. It can be a tough business, yep. but. It's definitely tough delivering hard news, but yeah. I think if people see you as honest, um, and that's what it is, you know, being honest with somebody where they're like, can you save me money? I'm so sorry. You're you are getting the best rate you can, but to be 100% honest and saying, "Hey, stick where you are," you know. Yeah. So I think the honesty of everybody in this group um, is just something something to be celebrated. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Yes, we uh, we had a, a phenomenal uh, show tonight. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, Sean, for joining us and uh, participating in this discussion. We hope that the uh, buyers that are watching uh, this particular show tonight got a lot of good, useful information, uh, specifically when it, uh, uh, with regards to the home buying process. Any yeah. any final things we should add there, Jeremy? Or uh, <laughs> 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 I mean, Joey. <laughs> no, I think uh, everyone did a really really good job. Um, shared some really great information, um, and you know, I I, I know these people in. in these folks are going to be who I recommend. As a matter of fact, we just, I just got, while we were filming the show, I got, we got an offer. One of my clients got an offer on a house show. I might be calling Sean uh, tomorrow and I might be calling some of these guys over the next uh, couple of weeks to get that, get that squared away. So perfect. Um, yeah. I would recommend anybody use these guys. Perfect. And we're going to put their uh, contact information yes. into the chat section of Facebook after we get off the show here. We'll also post it on our uh, Facebook page as well so that you, you have uh, any further questions or maybe you got a question that didn't get answered tonight you want to ask you can contact them directly so mm -hmm. for everybody on the panel tonight uh, and for Joey I'm Kevin we're signing out for tonight and take care of yourselves and each other we'll see you next Monday night stay safe everyone thanks so much guys <laughs>